seconds remaining. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the galaxy battle for the entire Three galaxy. It's going to be Mad Kings going up against VRFGC. Game one was a stomp. Like, we've seen some stomps before, like games where a team has some trouble and then, you know, they kind of just get further and further behind. No, this one was done and dusted like 10 minutes in and then it just took them another 10 to actually seal the deal. So, Mad Kings are feeling pretty good about themselves. It seems like, matchup-wise, they ha just drafted the right heroes with advantageous matchups to just win off the lanes. Radiant and they did win off the lanes, and they just won so much that they just won the game. But also, it did, did seem like they were on a little bit of a different level. They made better movements than VRFGC. They applied just better pressure overall. Again, a lot of that has to do with their advantageous lanes, but uh, we'll see if VRFGC... Can actually make any sort Ten of play here remaining. this is lower bracket and if they lose this one then they are going Five to be remaining. out uh, no more chance for galactic supremacy because unlike other tournaments in galaxy battle that's what the winner gets they get to dominate the galaxy it's true look at the rules i'm mike Lars, gonna be your caster for this second game we have omni knight tiny being banned out in the first phase this time uh, again, very powerful heroes. We don't really see a lot of Tiny in SA, though. So, uh, you know, maybe VRFTC watching a little bit too much of the other regions because I have not seen any Tiny at all here in SA. It'll happen soon enough. Like, the hero is good enough so that he will start to be picked. But uh, you know how there's, like, time zones? There's also Dota zones where it's, like, the Chinese do something and then it, like, takes a little while for Five Europe to, to get it. Remaining. Or, like, the Europeans and the Russians start doing something and then it has to cross the entire ocean before the Americans start doing it. You know, there's a little bit of lag there. But they'll grab the Pugna as the first pick, which is very aggressive from VRF GC. It's a hero that is kind of a double-edged sword. Like, it is very, very powerful. You can push the towers. Your laning phase is pretty good. Ten but seconds, at the same time, ten. if you fall behind off of bad lanes, and they had terrible lanes last game, so Five maybe it's seconds, not going to be that great, then you're going to be in a lot of trouble because a Pugna who's behind kind of turns into just a really bad support hero. You can't do anything to get back into it. Like, you can't really farm fast enough. You are just super, Radiant super uh, thin. You just cannot survive in these fights so you won't even be able to like survive with a double kill and then die you'll just straight die it's just that easy especially now that mad kings are running back their opening ancient apparition sand king was a reasonable opening and we saw why in the last game in this game even better up against the pugna like you're looking at just sheer magic damage coming out of these two as a support crew uh assuming of course sand king support which off of last game sladen played an incredible one I don't see a reason not to run that back. Uh, you have even more incentive to get magic damage. Pugna's only defensive tool is going to be Life Drain, which you could just stun him out of, or Ice Blast out of, in which case it'll do damage, but it won't heal him, and Self Decrepify, or I guess Decrepify someone else. Either one of those you can bypass with magical damage, so it just doesn't matter. The Pugna already is going to be countered as much as you can counter a Pugna. You know, the, the hero is usually pretty resilient. The lanes are usually pretty good. His attack uh, damage and projectile speed, both more so on the higher end of things. But this is going to kind of pigeonhole VR into a, a very dedicated strategy. You don't pick up Pugna nowadays unless you plan to push. Yeah, the, the nerfs hit him quite hard from the uh, from the last patch to this one. They will grab a Night Stalker to go along with the Pugna. Uh, not really a, a huge combo or anything like that, but hey, it's a Night Stalker you can get in the first phase. You're going to pick it up. Uh, just apply that pressure towards the AA to the Sand King. You, as a Sand King or AA, cannot really turn around and start trading hits with the Night Stalker. You just don't have the damage or the survivability to do that. So trying to apply that uh, that aggressive power here. A, a good style, for sure, from, from VRFGC. They were a little bit complacent in their lanes in Game 1. If they're able to just pick up heroes that force you to be aggressive, force you to go for a lot of rotations then you will probably have a slightly better laning phase and then Ten have, of course, a better chance remaining. to just win the game in general. Night Stalker, Pugna, Five getting someone like remaining. a Shadow Shaman can add just a ton of push power here for VR, for the VR side. Between the Blasts and the Serpent Wards, that could be a very potent combo. Alternatively, uh, you know, Pugna can go towards mid or safe lane nowadays. Uh... Going for heroes like TA, those those really heavy building hitters, Lone Druid, Luna, it, all possibilities if VRFGC really want to commit fully into the uh, into this aggressive push strat. They don't have to, 
but with a first pick Pugna, you really should. They'll take out the Batrider, Mad Kings. That initiation, a very big component of actually uh, making that push strat happen. Once you're entrenched, it's very easy to get unentrenched as a Pugna. You just jump on him as a Sand King, and he'll just die because he's quite literally a bag of bones. Uh, so you got to make sure that you're the ones with the initiation. Puck is still in the pool, and that will be an absolutely premium pick for VR if they will still be able to pick it up. Uh, Puck and Batrider, two of the offlaners that probably have a little bit, uh, some of the most initiation from the offlane. Uh, Batrider in particular. Clockwork is also a reasonable hero to get if you want just, just initiation, but uh, definitely a lot weaker than the Batrider in that style. Because Batrider displaces, Clockwork does not. And Clockwork, of course, is... Uh, Gonna have a lane that he sometimes will just get crushed in. Sand King Ancient Apparition plus one can very easily crush a Clockwork. You just have that much damage. It's it's insane. A clock, even with Clockwork's durability. Kind of on the low armor end, if I recall correctly, he has like one base armor. He will have a Stout Shield, but I mean, regardless of how much health he has, like he can't compete up with Chilling Touch. Just a little bit too strong there. The Storm Spirit will be banned out. Interesting, interesting. It's one of these heroes that can just crash in super hard and just insta-kill a Pugna. Like, quite literally. Uh, we have seen a lot of impressive Storm Spirit play recently. And, uh, although I do think that with a Pugna and a Night Stalker, you can set up for a draft that is going to be powerful enough in the push department that you can essentially, like, lock the game down before the Storm Spirit really gets the critical mass. Seconds, They're just not going to worry about that at all. So getting initiated upon, definitely the, the fear here for VRFGC, but they also should be fearing, wasn't going to say the anti-mage, was going to say someone like a tinker, like if they are going to go for a lot of push, Mad Kings can just tinker and just wall out VRF with just a, a march of machine spam, you can't do much about that, or or missile spam. Of course, uh, at that point, Nether Ward is going to be pretty powerful, but, you know, who knows. Could go either way. Shadow Demon will be taken out as well, interesting. Shadow Demon Night Stalker isn't really a combo, nor is Shadow Demon Pugna. Mad Kings will, wow, third pick Medusa. I mean, the Anti-Mage was already banned out from VR side, so Medusa's biggest counter is gone already. Nyx Assassin is still in the pool. We've seen Weaver have a pretty good shot up against Medusa. The Mana Break talent at 10. It only burns, what, like 15? Uh, no, it's not 15. I think it's 20 mana. With Geminate attack and good attack speed, like, Five you can just destroy the Medusa's remaining. mana pool. So this is pretty aggressive here for Mad Kings. The Medusa is not really a hero that will dominate any given lane. She'll usually go mid lane nowadays, and she'll usually do fine. They're running out of time. Dire oh. team pick. It's a quap. Okay. That looked like a random because it was a little bit laggy, but I'm pretty sure you don't... I'm pretty sure, like, random Queen of Pain was actually decent. So picking Queen of Pain makes a little bit more sense. Throwing the Pugna towards the safe lane. Just looking for those matchups. Still, Nyx is the biggest hero they can get right now as far as Anti-Medusa is concerned. But Mad Kings get the tried and true combo of Ventral Spirit and Medusa. It's it's not really like a huge combo together. <laughs> it's not really like insane. But it is very powerful to give that Medusa that extra damage through both the aura as well as that wave. Wave, of course, you know, hits in a line, reduces their armor. And that usually means that Medusa can just go tear them apart. Ace is void for the offlane here, VRFGC. Uh, but of course, outside of just amplifying the Medusa and being able to save the Medusa from a Chronosphere, you'll have Eventual Spirit, Sand King, Ancient Apparition, Offensive Trilane to work with. Ten that is remaining. close to, if not the best offensive Trilane you can Five ever put together. Remaining. You have Stun to Stun. That's already huge, right? Like, if you have Stun to Stun in any given lane, you're already doing pretty well. Uh, stun to Stun into Cold Feet Stun. With Chilling Touch, that is disgusting. And, like, who is it actually going to be going into? A Pugna? A, a, maybe a Night Stalker can maybe survive that. Maybe. But a Pugna sure as hell will not be able to. They ban out OD. Is there a support Pugna incoming or something like that? Like a safe lane? Off lane Quap, safe lane Void with Night Stalker Pugna supports with a mid OD? Not really sure about that ban, but uh, <laughs> that one seems a little suspect. It seems like VRFGC, they've kind of pivoted a, a big way away from their uh, from their Pugna opening. Picking up a Zeus now as their fifth pick. Lots of burst damage, but is it going to be enough to kill off a Medusa? Because this VRF side 
is very front loaded in their damage output and by that i mean they will crash in really hard sonic Ten wave seconds, Thund three. thunder god's wrath lightning bolt chronosphere and that, that'll be all well and good but after Five that seconds, after that salvo minutes. of spells if they have not killed off mad kings they will not have that consistent damage it's kind of the nature of zeus you, you ditch your payload maybe you'll get another cycle of lightning bolts off but uh you're pretty much just a one-off type hero faceless void in the earlier stages of the game like pre-30 minutes is very much so the same if you don't get a kill with the chronosphere you're not going to get those kills co-op can kind of sustain damage output but i mean you look at the sustained damage output from output from mad kings they have it in spades specifically in this medusa now they don't have any way of saving anyone and there's usually not many safe heroes that come from the off lane maybe a centaur with like an ag stampede or something like that but for the most part mad kings can pick up literally any hero they want it's going to be most likely a solo safe lane hero for them throwing in three heroes towards the top lane an offensive tri lane it can be support zeus night stalker and pugna tri lane that doesn't seem terrible mad kings mm, i don't really know if they can get a saving type hero here doesn't seem like a good game for Nature's Prophet. Seems like a terrible game for Nature's Prophet. In fact, they can go for a Puck, a little bit extra damage, or just go Legion Commander once again for Sword. I mean, Sword's already warmed up on him, so might as well. Is it good here? It's, it's definitely not as good as in the last game, but a safe lane Legion Commander is always pretty powerful. I mean, we saw it in the last game. It's the same exact thing. It's, it's always pretty powerful uh, because you are able to kind of catapult yourself into that level 6 much faster. And off of good rotations with adequate support and with Venge, Sanking, and AA support, it should be more than adequate. You'll be able to kind of get tempo of the game very early on. If you get a fast Blink Dagger, you are doing very well for yourself. Wow, that is just a support Pugna. I'm pretty sure support Pugna is bad. Uh, it has very few merits. Mm, they do have Decrepify and Queen of Pain and Zeus. So they do have like that kind of amplification strat, but uh, first picking a support Pugna is not a place where you really want to be, and that is not fun. And we're in and paused. Somebody paused the game. This is an SA game, right? We're supposed to be paused right now. I don't understand what's going on, but it looks like we're good to go. We've got Infinity going towards the offlane as the Zeus. Zul is on the Night Stalker. Anyone else going towards the top lane? Yeah, it's going to be a support Pugna played by Study. I hate Grey's on the Quap. Had some real issues in the last game. We'll see if he's able to do better here. And QWERTY is on the Faceless Void on the other end. Sladen is once again playing that Sand King, as is Mogur on the AA. Madara is the Medusa. Got Sword once again on the Legion Commander. And Dookie, you're lagging, bro. Come on. You you almost missed the Smoke Train playing that Venge. Kind of want the Venge in the front. She has the uh, longest range stun. The big circle is drawn. They did drop First Blood in this area before. Uh, you could probably assume that, again, Mad Kings are going into this area once again. Faceless Void shouldn't have leveled up anything, and he hasn't. I think battle. he's fine. It's so weird that he has 299 movement speed. Oh, they're in the trees! They're in the trees! Don't go in there, QWERTY! Don't go, don't go in there, bro! Oh, he's chopping the trees! Uh-oh, Magic Missile, gonna land. There's no follow-up stun in range, though. Burrow Strike level 1 is pretty terrible <laughs> when you're looking at that. So yeah, they'll, they'll throw out a Magic Missile, trade it for 40 mana. Mana exchange in favor of VR. But uh, and the Boundary Runes will be split 2-2. Pretty standard stuff. And the lanes will in fact be offensive. Now this is a pretty big opportunity for Mad Kings. And the fact that they can go towards the bottom lane with just two heroes. Put the Ventral Spirit here with the Ancient Apparition. And you know maybe after having the Sand King chill in the bottom lane for a little while. They don't need to fully commit three heroes into that lane. That means the Sand King can help out with this Medusa matchup, which shouldn't really be that fun. Uh, last game, Madara had a pretty favorable matchup up against I Hate Grey. This time, going up against a Night Stalker and Pop as a Medusa. Shit's bad, man. He even got his courier sniped earlier uh, in, the, in the first game by Zul, and it didn't seem to affect him whatsoever. So uh, it will be a rough game to be Medusa, but, I mean, let's be honest, guys. It's usually rough times being a Medusa. Very, very, very rarely do we see Medusas just have an absolute free roll of a game. Those those games just don't exist anymore. Although, with some help, here comes the ganking Sand King. Sick bro strike value onto two. And a snake as well. That'll show him. Up towards top lane, we will have Legion Commander as well with a much worse lane than last game. Gonna take just a butt-ton of harassment here from the Zeus. Just looking to cancel 
That Clarity chasing after that Zeus guy. Eh, she'll hit him a couple times. It's not really going to bother her all that much, but for sure it's going to be a much weaker lane for Sword here. I don't think it's going to stop Sword from CSing. I think she should still be able to get an okay amount as long as she is... Well, she has actually gotten the Magic Wand already, so she should be just fine with the heals. Uh, yeah, it, it's going to be, once again, a lane that uh, is very front-loaded in damage. They either burst you for the kill, or they just won't get the kill at all. You really do need to help out this Medusa, though. It is a Night Stalker with one more Void. I hate Grey has Blink Dagger up. And Medusa has one point mana shield. That is not exactly a very great ability right now. Bottom lane, the Venture Spirit is pretty much as expected. Having a free farm time, at least as much free farm as you can expect in this scenario. With the Sand King rotating around with an Ancient Apparition, they definitely do have enough kill power to drop a Faceless Void. If they actually can get a good angle there. Sand King hasn't quite gotten to position just yet. And now he is very close to position. QWERTY doesn't have any OBS in the area. All the OBS for the Radiant are on the north side. So a Burrow Strike into a Magic Missile of Cold Feet. That's a kill. And QWERTY, he's dead. Although the Burrow Strike is a little bit slow incoming, it's going to be perfectly timed regardless. That'll be First Blood, drawn by the Venge. The uh, Faceless Boy definitely, definitely had enough time to time walk out of there. But he just figured, hey, there's no way I die versus these two heroes. And he's right, there is no way he dies versus those two heroes, but surprise, it was three heroes. You have no honor bringing in three heroes versus one. We can see this game at least, though, for VR's side. They are getting some CS. The last game, like, the CS was overwhelmingly in favor of Mad Kings. Like, all dire on top, all radiant on the bottom. This game, it's a little bit more even. Still, it's not going great for them, but better than nothing. I'm still not entirely sure what this Pugna is supposed to be doing up here, except for just harassing the Legion Commander. Like, the Pugna can do that decently, but this if you're looking for a first pick hero to do this type of thing, why not Bane? Like, Bane is just generally better than support Pugna at, at well, everything. Or maybe I just think Bane is too good. That's a very real possibility as well. Who knows? Dara's gonna get jumped. Blink in with a scream, and the snake is going to land onto two. Madara still has mana enough to walk out of here. Burrow Strike will not end up killing off a Night Stalker. Medusa's damage is pretty pathetic, though she does have Ring of Aquila. 75 damage per shot is not that bad uh, four minutes in the game. That's actually pretty impressive damage from a, from a hero that's usually just a pure quote-unquote late-game hero. But uh, yeah, first night time, we'll see what they can get done. Night Stalker going to run into someone who just straight TP out. Ancient Apparition will be fine. They will look for the Courier. Does have that immunity shield. Shield, it's just called shield. And Dookie will just continue to chill on this bottom lane. And the Baseless Void does have a lot of damage. Especially if he's able to roll lucky on some of those bashes. But Night Stalker isn't looking for it. They're looking for the Zeus up towards top lane. Sword, level 5. Decrepify Blast is going to do about nothing versus the Sand King. And Sword is just chasing, man. Infinity is so slow as Zeus and Sword with 14 stick charges will have another set of spears raining from the sky in just a little bit. Kablamo! There goes the Zeus and now Pugna is going to try and cheese out sliding but it will actually buff out the Decrepify. I'm not really sure if that really mattered. Uh, the Sand King probably was fine either way. And it will be Sword's first kill. Wait, did he? He got the kill. Yeah, he did get the kill with the overwhelming odds. Uh, not a dual victory, obviously, it's only level 5, but the, the more early game kills you get, I mentioned in the last game, same exact thing. Kills for Legion Commander beget more kills, and the Snowball just kind of runs out of control. Oh, cold feet. Night Stalker is going to run out of it, but he runs back into a Burrow Strike. He's going to fly over the hills, over the trees, but not over the crevasse, not over the river. The Zul will go down. Again, in a 2v2 scenario, VR actually do decently here. In a 3v2 scenario, it's just not fair. They don't have a chance in a 3v2. Especially now that Arcane Boots are up front slot. And oh my god. This dude got so much farm in the last game. It looks like he may reprise his role right now as the mega farm, quote unquote, four position hero. Not quite uh, to the level of last game, but man, like being able to just randomly spam out Burrow Strikes right now, grab the Bounty Rune. Easy game. And that damage is actually going to stick because Time Walk's on cooldown, so. This Sand King, though only level 3, is going to be an absolute menace. Now last game we did see a scenario 
where Mad Kings won the game essentially. Like they had the game all locked up without needing their fifth player. Dookie Huskar wasn't needed at all. It might just be another one of those games given how this lead is starting to extend. It's three minutes in and so far we've had no effective movements for VR. The Dire Courier will actually be sniped. I think it was the Night Stalker sniping the phase boots. Yeah, exactly that. That's quite nice for VR. Oh, Sand King trying to be sneaky is spotted. We'll see everyone though. Everyone spotted, no secrets here. Uh, but yeah, Mad Kings, they are really progressing well right now. Although, well, they'll find the H apparition and the Zeus is gonna come with a big hit. That Lightning Bolt doing some serious deep. Snake is gonna hit onto all three, giving Madara quite a bit of extra mana. Queen of Pain only one point blink, doesn't have the ability to chase forward for more. So the Ancient Apparition and the Sand King, not aware that they were wandering under vision the entire time, will be dropped in a hurry. And these are the type of plays that we want to see from VRFG. Decrepify into Bolt. It's only level 2 Bolt. That did not look like a level 2 Bolt. That looked like a maxed out Bolt, but that's just what Decrepify does for you. DTP out, jump forward. No, that's way too far. Can't get it. Mass rotations down towards the bottom lane, but in this game, VRFG can just blast you down. They will have that burst damage. That's just what Zeus has. That's what uh, Queen of Pain has. So much front-loaded damage, and it's up to Mad Kings to just make sure to have vision up to avoid that. Or jump in and kill off the Zeus before he can get that burst out. Legion Commander can put down a Zeus incredibly quickly. Though there is Decrepify to worry about, there is a Chronosphere to worry about, which will put a little bit of a wrench into that dual plan. Still, if you're, forced, if you're forcing the Faces Void to Chronosphere defensively, that's already a win. Madara's gonna snake out, it will hit oh, Queen of Pain for a lot of damage. Mystic Snake, man. Always pretty crazy. If you can bounce it onto someone, it does so much. BRFG's top lane's in trouble. Sword is here with Dookie. Only one point in the Vengeance Aura. Vengeance Spirit going maxed out into the Missile. Interesting decision right now. It is definitely uh, very powerful if you're able to land it specifically versus that Faceless Void. But uh, yeah, it's just trying to go for the early game. And oh, Queen of Pain has no mana. Stick charges. Bro. Bro. Oh, that's why. <laughs> I mean, I would have survived that because I would have remembered my wand charges, but not if I was disconnected. I will I'll, I'll allow it. Uh, I mean, it kind of sucks to be quap there, but VRFGC are either having some serious internet troubles or this is the rage quit of the century. Like, even game, they, they, they're not behind. Uh, but they're, they're just done, man. They just don't want to play anymore. They're just all going to disconnect. So that kind of sucks for the co-op. The worst part is, being co-op right now is you reconnect, and you're like, okay, let's get back into it. I'm laning versus a Medusa, and I'm dead. What the hell happened? Why didn't the game pause in time? Feels bad, man. Mm. Well, Legion Commander's still farming. Sand King is getting a much slower blink. He had a 12 minute blink dagger in the last game. And obviously he hasn't really uh, started building his blink dagger after just picking up that arcane boots. And in this game, he doesn't really have a broodmother to feast off of either. So a, a much different scenario here. The Mad Kings are, uh, you know, starting to rotate around with this Ventral Spirit. We saw it before the Huskar just able to go into the jungle and farm peacefully. Ventral Spirit can't quite do that but you can just go into a different lane and uh, either just go for kills in that lane or just aggressively push it even with only one point aura two points wave uh this frees up the other lanes for the supports moger is not going to be fearing the faceless void who's not level six yet i'm pretty sure level six faceless void can't kill off an aa because if you do i mean if you do time walk in and chronosphere you will unless moger's just completely asleep be hit with cold feet and cold feet's super annoying as faces void because you got to run out of the chronosphere to get that swirly thing off you then you got to run back in it's it's a whole hassle h apparition should be able to survive that uh unless there's thunder god's wrath and there is thunder god's wrath so maybe not <laughs> maybe maybe even with this maxed out time walk build with the faces void he'll have enough damage to kill off moger if they actually ever do reconnect of course Study is rotating in. Does have Arcane Boots on the Pugna. But, uh, again, it does feel like this Pugna, his contribution as as a hero, let alone a first pick hero, 
has been extremely lackluster. It has not been very impressive at all. He's he's still able to just amplify these nukes and just destroy these softer heroes from Mad Kings. But uh, like even like decrepifying Medusa and bolting her, uh, when Mana Shield is is maxed out, like it will do very little. Well, uh, the admin. Well, there is a pause, pause time rules. I know that they were they they talked about it in the last game. Their internet crashed. Peru Dota. I I think I can. I think I can, I think I know that. <laughs> it's okay. Sometimes internet issues just f you in the a. It just happens. Like when I started the stream today, I my. Uh, my upload speed was crap. It was terrible. Like, it was at, like, 700 kilobytes. It was... That's not supposed to happen. Right now, it's at, like, 4,000, 3,000, whatever. Hang around there. I don't know what happened back there, but uh, it was definitely, definitely a lot better. So. Their cafe got shut down? That would be so funny. They're playing an official, and then some guy just walks into the back room... Flips a giant switch, shoom, everything goes off. Guys, turn the power back on. Run to the next cafe. Of course, running all the way to your uh, your second favorite internet cafe. That's that's bad, man. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know how fit these guys are, but I'll tell you, the average Dota two player will not really be. Able to comfortably run to the next net cafe. Yeah, I'm firing shots here. What are you guys gonna do? It's it's just not it's just not possible. And then play a decent game. They gotta they gotta warm up for that shit. You gotta go stretch first. You wanna pull a muscle. You don't wanna be uh, playing Dota with a less than ideal physical in less than ideal physical shape, man. Feels bad. Mad Kings is mouse sports lol. Now that would be the freaking curveball of the century. Like, they're picking completely different heroes from what Mouse Sports pick up. The only indication is that they have some guy who has the same name off of some weeby character in Naruto or some shit who's untouchable and really powerful but didn't even win in the end because he's a bad guy. Spoiler alert, guys. That's the only thing they have in common, but they're still just playing from Greece and just having better internet connection than VRFG. That would be, that would be amazing. I'm pretty sure they would not be allowed to progress with this qualifier because that uh, it's a SA qualifier and Greece is not in SA. I do have an NA education, but even I know Greece is not in South America. I know, right? Write that one down, put it on the fridge. Double Mask of Madness. Is there anything else I could talk about in-game? These it, the game is like so young, it, like these items just aren't even coming up yet. Feels bad, man. Uh, so, how's everyone's day? Uh, yeah. I, 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 this is the this is the best part where I get to talk to chat, and then the worst part where I have to talk to chat with a two minute delay. That feels bad, man. After this, guys, we do have a, another game. Should be a Midas Club victory going up against what's it called Stars. And uh, again, the names of all these teams changes like all the time, but you guys will you guys will recognize the players, I'm sure. Because everyone in chat is an SA Dota expert, and I am just a tier 20 caster. And at least I will be able to recognize that. Hey, it's better to be a t tier 20 caster than a tier 21 caster, am I right? Pretty sure I've watched C games where that happened. There's been at least one where that has happened, I know of. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it happens a lot, or a lot more than one time, because uh, it's always like, you know, Hades and Cyclops and all those other guys that are casting the C Dota because they are in the time zone. 
They try to rematch by pretending to be dropped. Damn, if only there was some way to load in games. You guys remember that feature? You probably don't because it was like, it's not something that the chat really cares about. I mean, it's it's all about the kind of the tournament side of things, not like the, the broadcast side of things. Since Reborn or whatever patch that was, like, they just got rid of that shit. They just said, no, you can't load games anymore. And to be fair, like, there haven't really been many situations where that's absolutely necessary. What, Navi versus, uh, Empire, was it? It was it was definitely Navi versus someone had uh, some sort of reload or something that had to be done. And, you know, the technology clearly exists. The technology exists in freaking Warcraft 3, where they would, I think in tournaments have saves. You would, like, save the game every, uh, five minutes, ten minutes, something like that. And then if some shit happens and it's Warcraft 3, it's the freaking Wild West out there, like, shit does happen, like, you just load it. And then you're right back where you are, uh, whenever you dropped. But here in 2017, we no longer have the capacity to save games. I do think that you don't want to be doing that in uh, in every game, like uh, any pub game. Like, you don't need that shit, obviously. But if you're running a ticketed game, then, man, you got to have that load feature because it's bad. XD is called, and Queen of Pain is reconnected. And she's like, God damn it, I died. What happened when 19 fought 20? Oh, don't worry. I am on my way to assassinate the tier 19 caster right now. And if I kill him, then I automatically get promoted. That's how it works, guys. One of that's uh, you guys may not understand like the the way casting works is that there's a hierarchy in place. Like Gaben has a giant giant chart of like tier 1, 2, 3 all the way to like 1000 casters and then it's pretty much like battle royale. It's pretty much just like, you gotta kill the person who's ahead of you if you want to advance. You gotta make sure that you see the life drain from their eyes. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, but uh, yeah, I am, I am working on my assassination plan as, as we speak. Don't worry about that, guys. I will raise my stock, and all you 563 viewers, you will be here to witness it. Uh, I don't know what this... Okay, well, let's see if we can translate. I don't speak this. All right. Peru Internet XD. No te preoccupes Valkyrie. I have no idea what that means. Uh, okay, it's working now. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Uh, chevre. Se fuan esos viones. I'm pretty sure they're smack-talking their government. Like, 90% sure they're like, yo, this, this entire internet system sucks. Doesn't Peru have, like, no net neutrality? Whatever, guys. We're back in the game. Queen of Pain's sad. So is Study. Bro, what you doing? You're not supposed to run that way. What are you doing? Is he still... Is he? Did he actually connect? Oh, God. What is happening everywhere? What is happening? They're all dying. What the hell? I was so dumbfounded by the fact that... Pugna would run into those two heroes that I just forgot to look at the minimap. They do trade away the Legion Commander for the Zeus. Again, nuke damage is not something you want to underestimate, but it is a one-for-one -one trade. And the Legion Commander is technically worth less than the Zeus, so uh, yeah, there's that. Yuki is just going to be chilling up towards top lane, and the Legion Commander is only at 800 gold towards her Blink Dagger. Probably not going to do a hell of a lot till she does get to that point. It's very difficult to just walk in for duels, especially when you're trying to walk in towards someone like a Quap or even a Night Stalker. He's pretty quick. Faces Void obviously can jump away from you, so that's not going to happen. They're still going to try for it, though. Oh, they're trying. Middle tower is under attack. Here we go. Burrow Strike in to a duel. Cold Feet. That's how you get those kills. Unfortunately, it's not going to be for free because Zeus is coming in. Here's the Burrow Strike. Here's the duel. Cold Feet is going to proc. There's no save here from the Zeus, and they'll get a very easy duel win. Now, if that was a Pugna with Decrepify, they have a chance. But uh, Pugna is elsewhere. He's in mid lane pushing. Level 3 Blast is there. Unfortunately, Quap doesn't really push towers worth the damn, so it's pretty much just the Pugna who's going to run to Avenge. I said Pugna is a, a bag of bones, right? Like, he has 600 HP, and Venge does 100 damage a pop. Uh, 120 damage a pop. Let's say 150. 
No, minus five armor probably gives you more than 30 damage. I don't know exactly how much that does, but Magic Missile takes out literally half his HP pool. It's not fun to be a Pugna trying to scout. Like, let me tell you guys, this is unpleasant. Sliden, we're going to see the heroes, enemy heroes rotating in. We'll be able to burrow strike himself back to safety and even D ward on the way out. One kill for the Legion Commander back up towards top. And Sword is most likely just going to be chilling up towards top lane until he does have that Blink Dagger, in which case he is going to teleport out. Try to look for those kills with the duel and the... Uh... Oh, shit. They're calling each other snipers. I think. I, again, I don't, I don't speak this. I'm just, I'm just making shit up. Uh, but yeah, someone's someone's not happy. Uh, speaking of not happy, study is spotted. They do scan red, Dire. And, well, they do the Crepify. Burrow Strike out blind. Ends up hitting the Quap. And Life Drain lasts for, like, less than half of a second. I hate Gray is invisible. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. There is no detection in this area. There's really no need for detection, though. No, Zeus is going to drop some bombs on the Ventral Spirit. There's a Chrono Spear here as well. It'll only mount to one. And they should be able to at least put down this Ventral Spirit. They take a really big hit from the Overwhelming Odds, but they do get the kill. And should be able to bag the Sand King as well. Ice Blast. Oh, that's a beautiful Ice Blast. Lands onto three. Is that lethal damage? Yeah, chug your bottle. No. Keep trying. It's not going to do anything. I hate Grey will die to Mogur was able to pick up level 7 actually on that bottom lane a lot of free time there for the AA there's no vision here though they are looking for sword the TPs are coming in Sand King level 3 in the burrow strike sword is going to poke out of the trees QWERTY already use the time walk he's gonna dodge the burrow strike though slat is not quite close enough and swords now thinking about dueling no we'll reconsider there's Medusa to arrive an ice blast to come in the duel is there with the ice blast will win the duel and get two kills for the team with the third as well being picked up by Madara as he was able to chase out that Zeus. Burrow Strike for the Bounty Rune? Do it, man. Just do it. Okay. Everyone's going to shrine up. 4 to 12, and it seems like VRFG are uh, a little bit tilted after that mass disconnect. You can't blame them. I'd be tilted as well if my entire team disconnected and I reconnected into two extra deaths. Radiance that feels pretty bad, but so that's going to catapult Sword straight into his Blink Dagger. It's essentially locked up right now. Dookie. With his Mask Madness, Madara with his own, and he's destroying structures up towards top lane where Zeus is going to arrive, show off his Kaya. That would be a nice item to have on Zeus, but uh, still, it's it's not going to change the fact that in the end of the day, it is just a Zeus. They're able to Chronosphere, kill off the Venture Spirit, and that's all well and good. Can they do the same versus the Medusa? Life Drain is there with the Thunder God's Wrath, though she is pretty darn fast. She is going to decrease her own armor with the Berserk. I think it's not going to matter too, too much. Still 17 Wand Charges. Gotta eat him. Is gonna turn around now. Get some heals from Sword. And with the Venture Spear coming, they'll blow up Study as well as Infinity. They got jabated so hard. Now they're looking for the duel, although they'll get a little bit juked. They still have Vision. Ice Blast will connect. Duel. They have a Blink Dagger. And, okay, well, when you silence, you can't duel. So they'll just swipe down Sword with the Swords. And, ooh, that was close. QWERTY is going to time walk away from that Burrow Strike. I don't think that would have been a kill. <laughs> Dude, the all chat smack talk coming out now. Apparently there are like rules against all chat abuse. Uh, they, they said it in the last game, yesterday's games. So, like you're not supposed to do that. And I'm pretty sure those are in like all tournaments as well. Burrow strike, get onto the basis void, magic missile. Oh, we'll land. Vengeful spears trying to rush him down. Not quite, but that didn't heal up the faceless void from that burrow strike damage. And he's still being chased here. Sliden is going to find him with the burst strike. Here comes the epic enter. There is a chronosphere. And that'll leave the Sand King kind of XDing in the middle of nowhere. But the Ice Blast got him with the chill effect. Shrine won't do anything. Quirty's going to try to time walk. That will also not really help him. Although I do think he's going to be okay. Thunder God's Wrath elsewhere. It's onto Madara mostly. He's going to get wrapped around upon, but Sword is here with the heal. Madara is going to be in a pretty good spot here health wise sword still gets the blink in that bolt just didn't hit they take a sonic wave but it doesn't do enough damage i hate right now is no mana to blink out oh dear that is not the play that's gonna be two kills three kills in fact as the night stalker was still sticking around on bottom uh this game is looking a lot like the first game this is not cool man this is not cool at all I mean, Venge is even going for a couple of tanky items. We'll go for that Hurricane Pike next. The freaking medallion on his support AA. Blink Dagger on Sand King. Still a lot slower than the last game. A lot slower. But it doesn't seem like it really matters because Sword is going off. 
level two duel right now. She won three duels so far. So soon she's gonna get that uh, sweet, sweet 44 deep. Power is gonna fall and study. Don't show yourself, bro. <laughs> I wonder if Legion Commander can kill Pugna even if Pugna is decrepified. So he gets like how many seconds of this? 3.5 seconds of immunity. Overwhelming odds him. Duel lasts for 4.75. Can Legion Commander kill Pugna in 1.25 seconds? I don't think so. It's it's gonna be close either way. But either way, Pugna is uh, is kind of stuck up here right now. It's probably time to TP out. Maybe time to join some fights as they will find Dookie. Chronosphere not available though. And they'll start bashing him, but she has the barrier. It won't do much versus the Faceless Void, but they, they try to hit her. It doesn't do anything, and with the lifesteal and the regen between the Mask of Madness and the Hood, she's pretty much back at top shape. Sword is going to get jumped on top lane. Big Bolt! The heal is going to take out Decrepify, and that'll save the Legion Commander with the wand charges as well. I think if you don't take out Decrepify there, you probably die. This is a huge buff to the Zeus's nuking power. I'll take mm, it's probably Legion Maybe Commander to survive either way, but uh, still a decent attempt is going to mean that they have a lot of heroes on top lane and no heroes on bottom lane to actually help out against this push, and while well, the push is already done. <laughs> Again, Medusa damage with the Vengeance Aura. What level is it? Only Still only one. When that does pick up, it is going to give Medusa so much damage. Because the way that the Vengeance Aura works is that it takes your agility base damage and your base base damage and medusa doesn't usually get huge plus damage items she goes for plus stat items which means that vengeance aura will give the amplification to those additional stats and that is the end of mike's mechanics speech Yuki is going to be in a little bit of trouble here Sladen doesn't have a blink dagger no not quite but vengeful spirit with the hood takes pretty much no damage looking for the chronister will end onto two sonic wave will clip onto the vengeful spirit and they'll try to focus on this sand king i don't know why mogur ran into the chronosphere there right here comes the epicenter from the high ground with the burrow strike in will take down the base boy do a lot of damage to the zeus he has no escape kaya does not help you escape and they will take down two looking for a third it's zool on the way out blink duel in three seconds i don't think sword can really catch up to a night stalker though and that'll be that. 5 to 20, Mad Kings would be rolling in the dough. 101 extra damage here for the Medusa. Jesus. She is doing some serious deeps. <laughs> the, I mean, the, the hilarious thing is that the aura is only level 2. It's not even talented. I assume you get the 15 damage uh, at level 15, uh, level 15 talent. Oh, we get to see it. The challenge. Oh, no procs. No dual win. Well, that's an embarrassment for Legion Commanders everywhere, but still, Pugna was uh, pretty dead there no matter what. In the meantime, the rest of the team, how much minus armor is this? Minus six, pretty good, between the wave and the medallion. I mean, they have illusions also up on the Medusa. She has a double damage rune, probably the most hidden double damage rune effect on any hero since she has mana shields, but man, it's an easy double life for Madara. 521 now. And this right here... Like, I'm not sorting by Dire on top, Radiant on the bottom. This is this is just not a good place to be. Can they ever kill off the Medusa? She's almost at her level uh, level 20 talent, that 800 mana. And at that point, I'm pretty sure it's an impossibility. Like, can that actually happen? She'll have 1,600 mana at least. Probably closer to, like, 1,800 mana off of the intelligence gains. Maybe some random mana items. Uh, they're just walking in, taking tier 3s. There is a no chronosphere. Swap back onto the Quap into a Burrow Strike. Oh man. The barrier onto the Vengeful Spirit is gonna keep her pretty healthy, honestly. Drops about half her HP into the tier fours this time. Sword is not gonna drop off of that dual play. And this is going to be one set of racks. Who's back here? Zul's trying to creep cut. You know, we all know that Night Stalkers are great at killing creep waves. GG is called. 400 MS. Oh, that sucks. Peruvian internet strikes again. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to play with that. I mean, I do feel for VRFG. Mass disconnects into super lag. They could probably just pause again and try to fix the lag. Maybe that'll help out. But, like, let's be honest. That game was... That game was pretty much a repeat of game one. VRFG C had very, very little to do up against what Mad Kings had. And in games like this, when you have... <laughs> 717, 407, 617, 3110, Sladden Sand King on point. Uh, there's only so much you could do. 
at a certain point, you are just not able to combat up against the enemy team, and that's just going to be that. So that's going to mean that we have VRFG moving forward to the, I guess, finals of Group A, let's call it. Face up against T-Show. That one's going to be happening tomorrow. I will not be on that, uh, but we do have another game. It's going to be in an hour, 30 minutes. God damn it. I don't think they're going to push the game up anyway, so we got to wait. I'm sorry, guys. I hate the long uh, the long gaps in the games more than you do, trust me. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be between Stars and Midas Club Victory. It's the same lower bracket game, but I promise Stars and Midas Club will be a much more interesting matchup than this game because, you know, the bar wasn't really set all that high. I'm Mike Loris. Next game, there will be a timer on the screen. It's going to be long, guys, so uh, you probably want to go watch something else in the meantime. But for right now, congrats to Mad Kings, and I'll see you guys in the next game. Again, estimated start time, 1 hour, 30 minutes. Feels bad, man.